What's up, YouTube? This is for Trey Gomez. You guys, today I have you guys a great day on the market, guys. We had another crazy day on this market, guys. Make new highs right after the interest, you know, uh, rates getting cut for 50 BPS. We discussed this last night, guys. We kind of discussed of how there was, and there was a more likely investors were going to actually, you know, like this cut, right? We, we, we were going to have this uh, possible continuation. You know, it was one of those scenarios that we consider, right? Now, of course, we're going to kind of deep dive on that, you know, those thoughts and, you know, plan ahead because, again, like I said, money flow is going to start going into different sectors, right? So we have to be ready for those things. We have to, like, try to follow where the big volume is, right? Because stocks are popping, believe it or not, even though sometimes we have the price action slow throughout the day. I mean, if you look deep enough, right, they're going to be stocks going in like crazy. Like, I have a stock on my scanner that they keep going crazy. Like, currently, right now, man, there's this stock, the LFLI, just come out my scanners. Look at this, man. Almost 120% after hours in less than 20 minutes. So, there's always runners. You know, I have AMD going crazy, right? Like, 50%. So, there's always stocks, right? And the key of the success, you know, being a successful trader is kind of find this stock before the actual run, right? That's kind of the key. And sometimes again, sometimes you gotta stay, stay, stick long enough with one company if you believe the fundamentals. And again, if you are sizing properly, and then you're only gonna get paid. So, based on that thought as well, you know, some of those probably you are talking about. You know, I've been talking about IMBS. I'm still holding this, and the reason is because not only I like the company, they reported to the earnings, and as you see there, the, you know, the Q4 sales there's there's 73, 730,000 up from the last year to year. Now, earnings are great. But, you know, the, the fundamentals are great, you know, they, so they're doing pretty good things. But of course, you know, we you guys notice that a lot of times stocks are going to sell out with the news, right? Not all the time a news means that the stock is going to rocket. Remember that not all the time is that way. You know, many times, again, we're going to have this sell-off scenario. So that could be one of the things that might happen as well. Remember that we discussed this last night. The prospectus of an offering as well could be potentially scaring some investors and, you know, scaring, uh, you know, uh, the you know traders, you know, people that's putting money into this. So, Again, I'm not a person that looks big, make quick money, right? If I pick a swing and like the fundamentals, sometimes I can stick long enough. I can stay weeks, months, right? Remember, swing trading, it takes time, right? And this is the big money's number. I mean, we've proven this many, many times, right? Couple examples, we trade MKWG today, make new highs, and that are going to 1.38. We took profits. Ale, we discussed this line last night, guys. And that are going from the 1.35 to 1.66 to 1.56 today, guys. And again, this is the thing, right? You see how we add up. We start accumulating on lower levels and we just let it play out. There is no stress here, right? But if you over leverage yourself at the beginning, that is when the things start getting bad. You'll just then emotions start coming in and you're letting those emotions to play out. So again, all my trades, all my guidance is here in the Alpha community, guys. I'm here 24-7, you know, when I'm active. Put in my trades, put in my dates, you know, entry sexes or dates, right? Everything that you'd really want. Again, people that is probably new to the market, they're looking for a better guidance. This is what I'm here, guys, 24-7. So check it out, guys. If you want to be part of the team, we have options as well, you know, option levels. Because I only put SPY out there, but I discuss about Tesla and Media every single day. And again, our options rooms go crazy like every day. You know, I appreciate everybody in there. They're killing it, crushing it, making money here and there, right? But again, join up, guys. The link is in the description, guys. First comment, check it out if you want to be part of the community. We are crushing it. We've been crushing it since you know all this time. And I've been telling you guys, you know, you have to be early on this, and this is the place to be because we have not only tools, but we got the people, the successful people to do it. All right. But really quick, guys, we have one more day on the market. What is coming tomorrow? Right. What are we expecting tomorrow? I haven't checked. Let me check really quick. I don't know if we do have more data. So let me pull it out, right? Because I don't remember. I haven't really checked. Uh so let me just pull it out really quick and see what we have. Well, tomorrow, guys, surprisingly, we don't have none. Non schedule. So tomorrow we had, keep in mind that the market made new highs today, right? We got up, we ended up making new highs. So there is a chance, guys. That, remember, people is going to take profits. Nothing runs whatever. So I'm I'm, I'm just speculating, right, that tomorrow we might have a half out of tracement, right? And it could be a hell to the tracement. Remember, you know, we only got up, we make new highs today, we create a gap. It is just makes sense. People are going to take profits before the weekend ends, right? So whether we have a sell-off in the morning, whether we can have a sell-off towards the end of the day, it is just like I'm, I'm leaning just bearish in that way because, again, it just makes more sense out of it, right? Again, anything can happen. I mean, market can still bounce, can go higher. This is why, guys, you don't 
we can speculate many things. And I see this all the time. People speculate, but then they think that they can see the future. Nobody can, guys, right? Nobody can. No, not the YouTuber that has, you know, 1 million blues. No, not a YouTuber that has 5 million blues. Nobody knows. No, I don't know. Nobody knows the future. We speculate, right? I've been telling you guys, like, some people has been calling up a crash. You know, September, yes, statistically, is one of the one of the worst months performing. But what is your crash, right? People has been telling me, hey, man, you know, I, I loaded some puts. Now I'm down a lot. You know, we, we were supposed to crash in, on September because they've been saying that we're going to crash. Man, man, listen, don't be a sheep, right? Learn to think by yourself, right? Learn to, if you're going to listen to someone, at least make sure that the person is explaining all the reasons, not just following somebody blindly. Because I cannot tell you guys how many messages I got today about this, right? And I strongly want to tell you guys, please don't do that, right? Not You cannot base previous price action history. It is good to kind of reference, but you cannot let that define what's going to happen today. Exactly for that reason, it's because people, many people is losing a lot of money playing on that thought that was going to be a crash on the market on September. We might not have a crash. Yes, we might have a retracement, but we might not have a crash. Like I said, the market is inflated, right? At some point, we're going to have a big retracement. When it's going to come, we don't know that, right? We just got to follow the trend. We got to play out of what we see every single day, right? That is what we do. That's why day trades are winning this market, right? Because we don't overstay too long and we trade what we see every single day, right? So let me really quick go on into the chat, guys. And like I said, SPY is making new highs. We have this trend. Look at this. And we are holding the EMAs. But like again, tomorrow we are already having some sellers accumulating on the chart. So tomorrow, look it up. If we do break the trend, right? The small trend. We break the 20 EMA and we could potentially come back down to 567s. We break the 60 EMA, that could be the health of the tradesman. Then we can probably drop down tomorrow towards like, you know, 565, fill the gap down. And maybe again, if, if you know, sellers are strong enough, we can even come back down to like 562, retest support, retest the 200 main, right? And, it, and if we bounce, that's the possibility that we can also, you know, come break it out. I will need to believe that we can have to break 572.88, which is previous highs, today's highs, in order for my new highs, right? That is kind of then the expectations for tomorrow and for Tesla. Tesla guys, they absolutely great, right? We had a go up. The trend was very, very intact. And again, this is what I'm telling you. This is all about setups. I alert Tesla today on the kind of channel. We had the levels and the levels were absolutely killers. And they went, don't want amazing guys because the levels are here to the T. Look at this. Got my previous projection. I was curious to see how buyers will react to this area, but I was watching 234.74 break for calls and for puts. But guys, look at the chart. We had clear confirmation on the upside. Tesla literally... Broke guy, close above, you got the bars, you got a trend. Only had to execute and let it play out, right? Absolutely clear. Ended up running all the way down to like, you know, 5, 243 guys for like double breakout. That was plenty. That was literally plenty to make money. You don't have to hold the whole day. Remember, right? We are traders. We take part of the move. We don't take, we don't take the whole move. At the end of the day, that's what we want. You know, we just want to stay green. We're going to compound, compound our gains and just call it a day, right? Huge, huge day for Tesla. Looking at the bigger perspective of where we are, right? This is actually a big, big breakout. Now, we've been breaking levels like butter. So right now, you see how we're struggling right at that resistance level. So tomorrow, uh, Tesla's going to need to break this 244.20. If he does, uh, it is a high chance that we can open up for the next resistance at 247.53. If not, again, if we do have no rejections, some profit taken, then look that we have support all the way down to 239.86, right? That's kind of the range for tomorrow for Tesla. But great, man, we've been taking Tesla today. Again, this is why the guidance is important. The level, the levels are important. We've been killing it. You know, we are at four or five move in the morning on Tesla. And as we were going down, you know, we got we were almost already, you know, eight dollars from that breakout itself, right? So huge, huge money to be made on Tesla guy today, guys. I hope you guys don't miss it out. Join us to the community, guys, because we are on top of this. Now, Nvidia, right? Nvidia as well. Today actually ended up playing a little interesting. You know, we do have a breakout, but again, guys, like I said, don't matter the direction, right? See profit, take profit, move into the next one, right? There's no need for you to, to chase the 100% runner, right? Stay, be happy with five, be happy with 10, with 15%, be happy with that amount of money. So NVIDIA, we have our levels today, and they actually ended up playing very nice. I actually look at this. I told my students I was looking for this break of the falling wedge. We already were breaking out, and I was looking for this 117.70 for calls and for puts as well, but based on the pattern. Once we broke that, we had the break up very, very clear. Close above the EMAs. We close above VWAP. We ended up making 119 highs, almost 120s at some point, but that was the move, right? But remember, for number break, we have over the two, three dollars up from that move. So plenty. Like I said, one, two dollars on options is going to give you easy 15, 20%. Again, you don't have to be greedy. That's all about, it, 
right? But again, you see how it ended up curling down pretty much more uh, towards the end of the day because it couldn't break out above 120s. And that's another important, you know, important fact. If you do see that level is struggling and it cannot break out, there's high chances that we can have that rejection, right? You can also see there were sellers accumulating a lot all the way down. And again, we have that retracement. Now for tomorrow, looking for, for NVIDIA, guys, you see how we keep struggling now with 20. It's not looking good so far, but we're still over the EMAs. But there is a chance that because we rejected today, we can come at that lower, right? There is a chance that we can come back to 116s, retails or EMAs, and we have the near support at 115. For me to believe that we're going to go bullish, we need to crack to these highs, 119.66, and then we have 120s, and then we might run towards the resistance that is sitting at 121.86, all right? Now, jumping on the penny stocks, guys, your favorite, guys, we got a, we got a lot, really, man. You know, just, just penny stocks, guys, every single day they paint. And I tell you, if you want to be part of the challenge, guys, the challenge is just growing every single day. We're looking for that, for that, you know, a uh, compounding gains, right? That's that's the way to do with a small challenge account. Today, guys, we made another trade on a challenge account. Nice move, you know, we took um, GSI. Though actually, I took the trade on live trading because I did with move my students. I put the recording, and this is what I do, guys. I also go live with my two more my students, right when I can. More, I try to do almost every day, but I, you know, again, we do this, and I'm trying to do it. So people can see it live. How can you actually how you execute the thought process? And again, that there is no need to chase big money. Compounding gains is what's gonna make you grow your small accounts. Remember, right? You're you're dealing with limited funds. You cannot be looking for bigger runners because that way you're gonna lose, right? Most of it you're gonna lose trying to achieve in those things. But anyways, when we part of that challenge, guys, because once we get to 10K, we're gonna grow this. We're gonna have to 25K, 50K, 100K. So you wanna grow the small account, join our guys. The link is gonna be description and you can join to the challenge. And again, Everything else is here. Now, there's a setup that I want to discuss to you guys today. They're actually like Apple, right? Again, BCDA, guys, I'm telling you, I'm loading up. I'm, I'm still accumulating. This is just a matter of time. Not only we have the fundamentals, it's still hanging around $3. We only need a break out of bottom, and this is going to snap out. But again, no rush, right? If it doesn't break out today, it didn't break out today, make new highs today, which is great. It's bullish. That's fine. Let it play out. Now, what I really want to discuss today is bear, right? B E R O. This is a very interesting stock, right? So what happens is that they had some news not too long ago, right? They got a regulatory approval on a strata in the market. This one actually went crazy. Let me explain you what's really happened here, right? They got a big move from like what from like 40 cents to 1.45. That's a huge move. It had almost almost pretty much like a 90% retracement from the 1.45s to the same level to 54 cents. Today ended up recovering from 50, 50, 60s all the way to the 85s. I loaded some here for a couple reasons. Number one is that it's a 6.70 million for very small float, right? We do have a nice trend, accumulation of buyers, right? There could be a potential breakout again. Reason is because looking at the major time frames, and it's important this, right? When you look at the bigger time frames, you can kind of see what really happens in the bigger picture. So the daily already shows me how buyers literally ate up the dip. Like they were, they were literally like they just literally today bought that day all day long, and this is why we have recovery. So looking on what previous did, we know that the 200 is like a magnet. So we have the 1.02 on the daily, the 200 is right there. We're very close, right? For our chart, we're really still above the trend. We still have some buyers, right? We're at a five point fifty nine dollar size, so we're not even that overbought. And looking at the cost to borrow, we're at three ninety seven point fifty five, which again, it's just pretty high considering that we have good deals. So they had the chances for this one breakout again, the chances for actually getting some more bottle is, is actually still there, right? I'm gonna be accumulating again. So in order for a possible breakout again, we can easily go back to $1 in my opinion. I think that we can touch $1 again, but we're gonna see, right? And that's just my, my thoughts. I think that the fundamentals fit with the price action and the trend and the recovery, but again, bars seem to be showing pretty good. So um, we, we what we do as a traders is follow the bottle, right? And again, don't miss out. Lipo, guys. I told you guys, this one, we're waiting for the major catalyst on this one. is the end of the year. But, guys, look at this. Pretty obvious. You know, we keep touching that 38, 37, 39, getting load up, breaking out like easy 20, 30% breakouts here and there. If it breaks, one that when they can snap up and you can go for the 82 cents, 82 cents on the 200 made easily, right? With no problem. It's a 5.26 million float. Again, Pablo data can come in. So this is kind of like a rinse and repeat until it breaks out. But I'm loading up on this one as well. It's just a matter of time. Patience, let it play out. All right, guys? Any questions, any questions, please let me know, guys. If you're making money in our picks, don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. If you have a question, tag me. Drop me a comment in the video, guys. 
for the guys. I'll see you guys in the community. Don't forget to sign up. Link is going to be in the description, guys. And once again, for those that are attending to the Miami Bootcamp, that is the in-person event. Once again, guys, as well, I'm going to put the link in the description. We have English, the Spanish version, too. Uh, again, we have surprises. I'm going to do a couple, you know, new things over there. We're improving a couple of things. But again, I hope to see many of you guys meet in person, network, connect. Yeah, and just build some world together. All right? Bye, guys. See you tomorrow.